Welcome to another edition of Local Focus. I'm your host, Sebastian Noel. It's been New Mexico Highlands Month here on Provi Networks. We've had a couple of current Cowboys in Jalen Domina Lovato last week and Marlon Cunningham a couple of weeks. But now we're going to have a future student at Highlands University, and that's West Mesa's sensational point guard, Maya Rivas. Maya, it's good to have you in the studio here finally. We'll get to all that Highlands stuff later on, but we talk a lot always with our guests about their upbringing and their development in basketball but before we can even get to that the Rivas name pretty famous basketball name in Albuquerque right can you take us through some of that well there's a lot of us as Rivas is I have my uncle Dom Rivas and his son Dom Rivas as well he goes to a Trisco right now so he plays with Josiah and all them but then I have three brothers that played basketball Nate Darren Damian so I guess it just runs through the family so obviously that's where your basketball development had to start, right? You're in a house or you're in a family full of basketball players? Yes. And to talk about some of that early on. Well, it's just a lot of competition in the house. Talks about who's better, who's better dribbler, better shooter. So it's just competition about who's better, I guess. And really, I mean, when you have that many basketball players around, there's probably nothing else for you to do growing up, right? If everyone has a ball in their hand? <laughs> yeah. Seeing it around, them playing just made me want to play, so... And when, when did you first start, uh, start beating some of your siblings? <laughs> well, I started playing uh, like third grade, fourth grade, I think. I started playing with my cousin Dom. I, I first played with boys because I couldn't find a girls team, so I played with boys because that was my only option. Um, let's talk about your dribbling since you brought it up. Probably your most unique skill when it comes to girls basketball dribbling, right? And w when you watch girls basketball, often the the most dominant players are the ones that can dribble, and dribble as m most dribble like a dude, right? That's that's what you always <laughs> yeah. hear, right? And so that's the skill set that you have probably more so than any other player. Where did that come from? Is it just being around all those guys? I think so. I would go to my brother's practices. I would see a basketball, and I'd just pick it up and start dribbling. And my dad always told me, dribble with your left hand, since I'm right-handed. That's mostly what we focused on. When did you realize that, hey, man, I got some handles? Um, probably like seventh grade, sixth grade. So uh, Coach Otero tells me this story. He says that he was at a, a, at a tournament coaching with Coach Schreier one time, and uh, he said he saw you, second grade, Maya Rivas, <laughs> and uh, he, said, he said, this is going to be the best Rivas the city's ever seen. And he said he said that because of the way you were dribbling the ball back then. So you ever told you that story? Do you remember that at all? I honestly don't. I grew up around Otero because of my brothers being at West Mesa, but I don't recall. So best shooter in the family? Oh, of course. That's you? I'd, yeah, out all of right. all of them. All right, best dribbler in the family? Everything. All right, everything. That's all right. <laughs> I don't even have to list them. So you, all right. So what? Uh, who gives you the biggest challenge when you're playing right now one-on-one -on -one with a family member? Mm, I don't know. It's hard. Who do you like to play the most? I should... Probably probably my brother Darren, the right. middle one. And why is that? Because he, he he's shorter than Nate, so Nate will just block me right away. Um, Damien, Damien comes around. He doesn't like to play with us as much. He'll rather work out with us. But I don't know. Darren's shorter, and we just push each other, I guess. So when did they stop? When did they start? Swat, well, probably when you were young, did they ever not swat your shot? Did they, you know, take it easy? Or when did they start saying, okay, no, we're going to play for real, and they swat your stuff back to you? When, when did that start happening? <laughs> um, I think they have always done that. I'd go up when I was little, just beat my shot, get that out of here. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So they would just push me, but I think they go harder right now just to make me get better because I play bigger girls. Like, of course, I'm small, and playing them, like, Nate and Kamara Decker, like, Kamara's tall, yeah. so Nate would, like, go hard to make sure when I go up against Kamara, so things like that. 
Was there ever a time where you felt like, okay, this lack of size is going to hold me back? Or did you always kind of develop your game knowing that you would probably be smaller on the court? Um, when I was little, I didn't know I was going to be small because playing with boys, I was the tallest on the team. I, I was a five when I played with boys. And then as I got older, I never grew. So I said I just had to work my, or work my way around who's taller than me, just keep pushing. It doesn't matter about the size. It matters how, who goes harder and who wants to win. So. Does, is that something that you, you utilize now in West Mesa? You, you just you don't let size as an excuse. I know Coach Otero said you go harder than most girls he's seen at practice. Talk about just, you know, that. Well, I personally think most of us at West Mesa are all the same size, some inches here and there, but we're all the same size. And when we play teams like Rio Rancho, Highland, like, it, you can see it. It's just who wants it more. Size doesn't matter. So you mentioned Rio Rancho. You mentioned Highland. We're going to get into that. We're going to take our first break. Got to pay some bills and, and take a look <laughs> at some sponsors. But when we get back, we're going to go into the West Mesa years, and we'll talk about probably what's been the best rivalry in the city when it comes to girls' basketball, the Highland Hornets and the West Mesa Mustangs. And we'll hit the Mustang years after this break. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swords Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 Shut Helmet. It's all at Garden Swords Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swords Team Sales. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage. This is Coach Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, hello to all you parents out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, 38 years for the AYBL. You guys are doing a great job. You've shaped a lot of lives young men and women, and you'll continue to do that. Parents get involved, sign your kid up. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, it helps shape who I am today, it helps shape uh, me as a basketball player, as a coach. So get out there, sign them up, have a great season, good luck to everybody. I wanted to mention that if you miss any episodes of Local Focus, you can catch those on YouTube on our YouTube channel. Just go to ProView Networks and you can find those there. Our wonderful director Josh Brown puts those up on Tuesday usually. So if you didn't catch our original 10 o'clock air, you can always watch those on YouTube. We're back with West Mesa's fantastic guard, Maya Rivas. We'll go into the West Mesa days now. First of all, going into West Mesa, obviously you, you had to know about the program a little bit and uh, West Mesa was rough for a while there because I, I got there a couple of years before you did as a PA guy, announcer there. And we're talking running clock at halftime, less than an hour games, that kind of thing. 
So what was your mindset then? Did you knew you guys were going to make an immediate impact or was there ever any hesitancy? Um, I thought we were. The hesitance, not really. Seeing my brothers go through, I loved Coach Schreier, Coach Jones that was there. And then when I saw Manny Otero was there, I was like, I knew right away. Just Josh, can we edit that nice thing about Coach Schreier out? I don't, he's going to get a big head. Anyway, so you go in, you start your freshman year, and just kind of take us through that beginning of the year. Did you guys start to gel right away? Talk about some of your teammates. What were the practices like? When did you really think, all right, we got a thing? Well, going to practice with Coach Otero was rough my freshman year. We did a lot of conditioning. I think it was just different for all the girls, but we clicked right away, every single person. We had a lot of team bondings, getting to know each other. So I think that's what really impacted us. So Coach Otero practice different than a lot of other ones you've been to before? Obviously, Manny can still shoot. Just ask him. He'll, he'll tell you. He can still shoot, right? So is he, what's the practice like with Coach Otero and, and that many good players? It's a lot of focus. It's a lot of shooting, of course, you know. But we focus on a lot of defense as us being small. We do a lot of rebounding. We run, but it's not like a punishment. It's just conditioning, so. Right. And so did you guys really know that what your identity would be at that point that you would you know be a good shooting team and that you would be able to run a lot of teams out of the gym is that something that very similar to what Paul Weir is doing now with his his men's team at UNM is that kind of a focus hey we're gonna we're gonna outrun these guys we're gonna run teams out of the gym um well that wasn't our focus we just thought about it and realized that we are such a small team and that's the only thing we could really do so so through that year Obviously, things are going great. Um, when did you first notice the support there at West Mesa? Because, you know, I, I go to the games. Obviously, I'm there. And uh, the crowds at, at West Mesa girls games are, are pretty big. Well, when did that start? I think it started my freshman year around district. Because when we made it to the district championship, I remember playing at Albuquerque High because I don't even know. But... I remember seeing a big old crowd and ever since then the communities got together and made a big impact. So that's still one of my most fun broadcasts that I've gotten to call is it was at Albuquerque High because it was a boys game girls game double header there and uh, so I believe Valley got to choose where the game was going to be and uh, so that's where we're playing and you're so you're playing Valley and um, well take us through the game. Obviously, it had a pretty, the result wasn't what you wanted at the end, mm -hmm. but you had some signature moments in that game, first in regulation and then in overtime. So talk about it a little bit. It was a nerve-wracking game, actually. I just remember me and Jennifer just jacking up threes, trying to make it. And they were all going <laughs> yeah. in, weren't they? Because playing against someone so good like Brianna Royball, it, it was tough because she was fast. She was way faster than me. So having to play defense and then it being so close with their threes and then their post, it was just going back and forth. So with the classic of Valley and Albuquerque High, the boys game right after it, the gym is always full for that game. So you guys are approaching the end of regulation and into overtime. The gym's already packed at this point. And I can remember even Adam and Steve were behind me getting ready to do their boys game. And by the time that overtime started, all eyes were on that game on the court, right? Yeah. Did you sense that the crowd was really into that overtime? Yeah, I thought so. Every little thing, whether it was a loose ball, a shot going up, you could just hear stands going crazy. And obviously that's a game that you guys didn't pull out there in, in overtime or double overtime, I believe, right? It was double yeah. overtime? What was Coach Otero's message after the game? What, what, was the, what was the mood in the locker room after that game, knowing you guys were, had something special going and it was pretty close? Honestly, it was sad, but then it wasn't because we know we gave it our gave it our all, all that game and we pushed through it it was sad because we we thought we deserved it because we, where was West Mesa ever right and just making a difference we thought we had it so it was just sad so highlight of that freshman season for you yeah freshman for sure absolutely so let's go sophomore year obviously expectations have to be a little elevated at that point right mm -hmm. talk about the, your your mindset uh, early in that season yeah well Last year we made it to district thinking we have to win district and then Metro came along. We won Metro sophomore year thinking, oh, we have to win district now. And then after we won district, we we're just heading for state. So, 
uh, a pretty dominant sophomore season. Talk about that role that you guys went on and uh, just what was the confidence level at that point? I think it was really high because the girls we had, we knew that we could all make a difference. The way we played together, the way we clicked, because my sophomore year, that's when Jaden, Emily, we all came through, we all clicked. So we knew our standards were high. That was going to be my next question. So you have these two, obviously you have some, some standout players your freshman year, and then now the fab freshmen come in your sophomore year, and now, I mean, there is a buzz around West Mesa, around that basketball program. How quickly did the whole team gel with those fantastic freshmen coming in? Well, all of us played together when we were little, so we all knew each other. Right. And it just came in perfect. So we have Jazz, which our posts that could shoot still. We have Jaden, who could dribble, can shoot, play defense. Same with Emily. Emily's one of our best defenders, and she could score. It just all fit in. So that was the year that the rivalry at, with Highland kind of really got pushed to a whole nother level. It was pretty intense. Obviously, the setback that year was when Espy got hurt. Talk about that. Mm, yeah. Well, Espy, she is a big part of our team. Like everyone is, we're all family. It hurt us, even though it hurt her. It, it was a big impact. But I think we still pushed through it. Playing Highland, it was a big impact. Like, it was a hard game. It's our rival, then Espy. It was rough, but. Now, let's talk about that rivalry some more because you guys don't like each other. There's, there's no <laughs> doubt. So let's not, I mean, we're talking about girls are stepping over each other when <laughs> fouls are called. No one's helping anybody up. What is it like to be in a rivalry game like that? We're in rivalry week right now with El Dorado and La Cueva here. And, you know, but what's that rivalry like? Right? It's just, oh, that one's hard. Stepping on the court is just a whole different story. Seeing them battled head to head trying you just don't want them to get the ball you don't want them to score nothing it's just a lot. now was it that year or after that season where you guys also played in the summer and fans had to be separated that oh, rivalry is real right yeah I think it was after that in the summer during the New Mexico game right that's because right. we both had our Mustangs Highlands AAU um, we played each other and it was just getting wild just both of us fighting for throwing elbows, diving for the ball, rebounding. And I think the parents got into it, but I honestly don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, that, that rivalry was intense. Okay, so talk, tell, take us to the state tournament that year. Obviously, it didn't end the way you guys wanted it to. Take us kind of to that last game. Well, the one about Real Rancho, right? Right. Well, Real Rancho, we played them in Metro. That was the hard thing, is that we played them in Metro and beat them. Yeah, it was a close game, but we, like we beat them still so I think we kind of came in too strong thinking too big of heads coming in because we already played them we beat them and I think just the environment playing in the morning and then playing with all those lights it was, it was hard in the locker room it was hard what is it like on the floor obviously your setbacks have come at the same place they've come at the star center right mm -hmm. and I know when I did games with coach Yvonne Sanchez she would tell me, hey, this is going to be tough for these girls because a good shooting team like that goes into a place like that where there's so much room behind all the baskets. It's a no different environment. Since the setbacks were both at the Star Center, did you notice those differences on the floor? Because obviously you guys didn't shoot to your usual mm -hmm. standards at the Star Center. Well, Otero tells us about the lines, but we don't really focus on that. We just shoot when we're open. I see the difference, the lights, the how far it is. It's, it's a really different environment. And I think that's what made us struggle. But it could have been anything, our bad shooting, our thoughts, I guess. So obviously the mindset going into your senior year has to be a bit of unfinished business, right? With given that opportunity again at the Star Center. Talk about, you know, have you talked about that with your teammates? What's, what's the mental aspect right now? What's, what's everyone's focus heading into this year? Well, we talk about it all the time, actually, because me, SB Jen, we're all seniors. Like right. last year, last year, last time we'll get to play with Jaden, Emily, Jazz, everyone. It's hard, but we just think about it one game at a time. But then again, we're like, Metro, okay, we got it twice. We could get it. District, we could get it. State, we have to. Last year, we have to. Just keep pushing. So, I mean, do you ever have that does that go through your mind now? Okay, same shot, it's going to come up at the Star Center, or is it just a matter of repetition? You just keep good shooters, keep shooting? No, no, that doesn't really come in my mind. It's shoot or shoot, whether you're off, keep shooting. 
Right, absolutely. We're going to take one more break, our final break here. We're going to come back with our top five list. I, uh, we're going to have Maya go through her top five most memorable moments thus far. And then we'll talk about her future coming up in basketball. Dream Style Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as best custom home remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, Dream Style Remodeling is family owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 thousand homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. Dream Style Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000 square foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or dreamstyleremodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. It's Highlands Month here on Local Focus, and we've had two New Mexico Highlands athletes in previous weeks. Now we have one that looks to continue her career at Highlands. We'll get to that here. Maya Rivas is my guest. How long, of course, has college basketball been in your mind that you're going to continue this at the next level? I think since I've been playing, that's your goal. Get a free education, play, just do what you love. Since you mentioned it, education, Team GPA at West Mesa, pretty damn impressive, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you guys are a bunch of geniuses playing hoops there, right? <laughs> Talk about your, your team certainly does take care, business, take care of business in the classroom, doesn't it? Yes, well, all of us take AP classes, including our younger ones that are sophomores, juniors. And I know we practice all the time, but we make sure we get that done first. If, if you could have uh, some of the team versus Coach Otero and Coach Schreier in, like, let's say, a trivial pursuit or some intellectual challenge, who do you think would win, the coaches or the players? I think the players, especially if they're going against Coach Schreier. But. Yeah. I, I, yeah, well, she said it, but I was <laughs> thinking it, that's for sure. All right, so let's move to Highlands. When, when did that first come on your radar? Well, we played in Denver over the summer, and I saw him, and I talked to him and all. But really, he's the really only person who really reached out to me. So I think that's what really got to me. And what were those conversations? What, what, did, he, what, did, what did they like about your game? He told me he really liked that I was small, but I still played my heart out, that it didn't matter the size. So what are some things, did he, did he mention any things, or maybe you just in your mind, what are you going to look to develop individually as you go into your last year here? What, what, what in your game needs, needs development, do you think? I think working on my inside, because, I mean, I shoot threes all the time. I mean, working on my inside shot, getting more people open, getting the open shot. What goes into, uh, I'm always fascinated when I have, you know, players on that are at the, the top of their game. And so what goes into the tinkering in the off season? And, I, uh, and the reason I ask is because your jump shot changed pretty drastically from one year to another, right? Yeah. And so obviously that had to take place in the summer. First of all, talk about that. And then just what other work you do in the summer? Well, I still work on threes, of course. Jump shots, we always work on shooting. But the thing is, I've never really focused on that. I've always focused on dribbling or just shooting threes. So, I mean, that's what we focus on now is jump shots, trying to score, looking to get people open, just creating shots. What impact has your dad had on that development? Because I talk to him sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. And he's pretty intense. Like, I'm thinking if you go 10 for 11, he might be like, hey, Maya, why'd you miss that shot? <laughs> yeah. Right? So talk about, it. obviously, he had to be a pretty big impact, right? Yeah, well, after school, he would come, be like, get your shoes on. I'm like, okay, I already knew what we were going to do. We would do some form shoot, and he would rebound for me, have me sit in the corner, do some shots. He'd be like, make five, you have to make five before you move on, just things like that. So what went through your pr process this summer? Um, I worked out a lot with my family, all my brothers, my dad. Um, during the summer, Otero had practices too, and we worked on creating shots, working on our jump shots. I think it just depends how much time, like, we really put in so 
And I, I don't think that a lot of people realize how much time that you guys put in on your own, obviously, because I think that's a difference between a good team and a great team is the great teams, they, they get together and on their own time, whether they're at a park or whether they're at, at a gym or whatever, they, they put in the hours. I mean, what kind of hours are you guys putting in during the off season when, when maybe other teams aren't? Sometimes we do, we do a two a days. Sometimes we'll go in the morning and it'll be like a little workout, like jump ropes, um, ropes, things like that. That's actually how Josh gets ready for work every morning <laughs> is he jumps rope. I know you wouldn't think that, but yeah, he's, he's big on that. Go ahead, continue. What else? What else do you guys? What else are you guys doing to, to set yourself apart? Because I've seen how hard you guys go after. Um, then we work on shooting. We do the medicine balls. Just little things that people don't really focus on because little things do matter. Whether it's doing the right form, jumping correctly, things like that. So, what this year do you think you guys need to do to take that next step? I think we need to make sure we're healthy, but then I also need to make sure that we stay focused because last year we went on a winning streak and I think we got ahead of ourselves, but we just need to stay focused and take one game at a time. Now looking back at your time at West Mason, obviously it's not done, but you're going to be able to look back at something pretty special. Mm -hmm. The way that community has kind of embraced the team and rallied around the team. You know, we do a lot of games here, but I don't think there's a game that was more well attended than your Highland West Mesa game. Uh, your girls' games are usually pretty packed there at West Mesa, and that's a, that's something that a lot of we don't see a lot in girls' basketball. You know, I talk to Coach Mabry a lot at Cibola, and that's something she really harps on is she gets really disappointed in the crowds, right? And but your crowds are huge. Just talk about the memories you're going to have at West Mesa. Um, one of my favorite memories was last year when we played Highland, seeing that student section, there's never been really a student section for anything, football, right. basketball, boys basketball, anything. And last year we, saw, we had one for the Highland game and I thought it was cool seeing all the students, some of my friends dress up, paint themselves, get hyped, it was cool. Quickly now we have to run through the top five list, right? We're running out of time with Maya Rivas here. So your top five most memorable moments start at number five. I think number five is probably my Albuquerque, that game at Albuquerque High versus Valley my freshman year. Number four? Number four, uh, probably my the first Metro game. All right, number three? The game against Volcano where we played, or where I hit five threes in one half. Okay, number two? Two has to be when the team hit the record for threes last year oh, against right. Rio Grande. All right, and the number one most memorable moment in your career so far? Back-to-back um, -back metros for sure. Back-to-back -back metro championships. All right, that's that's a pretty impressive top five, and you have your entire senior year to build on that. I want to thank Maya Rivas for coming in. It continues Highlands Week or Highlands Month here on ProView Networks. Three Highlands athletes, well, two current, one future, and we'll have another one in store for you next week. Good night, everybody. Sadie's is a proud supporter of New Mexico high school sports and athletics, and we here at ProView Networks would like to thank Sadie's for their continued support in helping us bring you all of your New Mexico high school sports coverage.